Hello everyone, and I thank you so much for watching my video. Today we are going to do the Sew Along January project, which is McCall's 7981. If you're new to my channel, what I do is once a month, I have a Sew Along video for us to do together. And then throughout the rest of the month, I will post videos of tips that I think will help you out through the project. So if you would like to see more how to sew videos or would like to sew a project once a month, please hit the like button on this video as well as subscribe to my channel and maybe give it a share. I'm looking forward to this, so let's get started. Started. If you would like to know more about the pattern or the fabric that I chose for this project, please check out my January project reveal video from the beginning of the month. I will link it in the right hand corner here. I also made some videos on how to properly measure yourself out as well as how to read the back of the pattern so you can get started with your project. So you can also check those out. I will leave the links as well in the right hand corner here. So now let's get started on cutting out our pattern. So the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to take the pattern out of the package and we are going to unfold it completely. So now that I have the pattern all unfolded, what I'm going to do is I'm going to iron out the paper to make sure that our patterns are going to be flat. So before we get started ironing, what I would suggest is that you have your iron to the lowest setting. For me, the lowest setting is nylon. Before we start cutting, there's a few things you should know. I am going to be doing style C for the McCall's 7981 pattern. You're more than welcome to do style D because it's just the longer length of it. So when you're cutting out your pattern, you are going to cut the longer version of the skirt opposed to the shorter part of the skirt. This here is one of the pattern pieces that you're going to need for style C or style D. So now getting up a little bit closer to the pattern, I'm going to explain a few things before we start cutting. If you would like to know more about the symbols that you will see on your pattern, I would suggest checking out my video that I will link in the right hand corner at the very top, which discusses the most common five symbols that you will see on every pattern. This pattern only goes up to a medium, but you can buy the pattern in a size large to extra large. For me, I'm going to be cutting out the medium, but if you're a small or extra small, what you're going to do is you're going to follow the cut guidelines for your specific size. And now we are going to start to get cutting. At this point, I would like to show you the different style hem lines. So for me, because I'm doing style C, I'm going to cut on this line here. And if you're going to be doing style D, you're going to cut along the bottom line here. So now I have all of my pattern pieces cut out. If I wanna make sure that I have all the right pattern pieces, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take out the instructions that are in the pattern. And on this very first page here, it will show all of the styles and which number of pattern piece you need for that style. So I know that I have all of my pattern pieces so now we're going to get started on cutting the fabric. So this here is the fabric that I chose for the skirt. Sometimes what I like to do is I like to put the fabric on the floor and I like to lay out my pattern pieces first, just to double check to make sure that I have enough fabric and the proper layout. Once I know exactly where my pattern pieces are, I'm going to take a picture and then I bring it back up to the table and I start cutting out my pieces with a rotary cutter. So at this point here, I figured out that I wasn't going to have enough fabric. I had kind of talked about this in my project reveal that I didn't think I was going to have enough fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the skirt a little bit shorter. So how I'm going to figure this out is that I have the front piece here with me and it shows where the waistline is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up against my body, roughly around to where my waistline is. And you can see here that the skirt is probably going to lay around my knee. So in this case, what I want to do is maybe take off about an inch and a half at the bottom, just to make it a little bit shorter. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my ruler and I'm first going to make my mark of where I think I would like it to sit. So I said maybe about another inch and a half. So I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to guide out an inch and a half at the bottom of my skirt. Also keep in mind too, if you are shortening your skirt as well, that the pattern already has allowance for the hem. So when you're doing the marking, you want to make sure that you are not going too short or to the exact point of where you want it, because you're going to be bringing up about five eighths of an inch for the hem. So now I am just going to cut off this bottom piece here and I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom piece. And now I'm going to lay it back onto my body just to see where it's going to lay. So I think that this is going to be a good amount to take off. It's not going to be too short and I think it's going to give me the allowance for my fabric so I can cut all of my pattern pieces out. And now I'm going to check again to make sure that it fits. So I realized that my number five piece also needed to be cut down an inch and a half because it's going to be the finishing for the front of the skirt. So I also took off one and a half inches on the bottom of number five. And the layout here that I have I think is going to be enough because number six is going to be just cut one. So I'm going to be opening up the bottom of the piece and number five is not going to be overlapping number six. So the first pattern piece that I'm going to cut out is number eight, which is the back piece. I'm going to line up how I had it on the floor. And I am going to use these as weights. These are washers. I got these at Canadian Tire, I'm pretty sure. And I just put them on top of my pattern piece. Like so. Just to hold it down. So now I'm going to grab my rotary cutter and I'm going to start cutting all around the skirt and where there is notches, I'm going to cut into it a little bit. So now I'm going to cut out the last piece, which is the pocket number nine. And I'm not going to be using the same material as my skirt. I'm going to use just a broadcloth for this. The material that I have is fairly thick, so I think it's going to be very bulky for the pockets. So this is why I'm going to be using a cotton polyester blend for my pockets instead. So I almost forgot to cut out the interfacing. We are going to need the interfacing for number six and for number five. So with piece number six, because you're only cutting one out, you want to be careful of how you're laying it on your interfacing. What you want to do is have the interfacing with the glue side up and your waistband with the wrong side down. So today I don't have time to sew, but now that we've cut out our pattern and our fabric, I think this is a good place for us to stop and I'm going to come back tomorrow to show you how to sew up the skirt. Hey everyone, so I have about an hour and a half to do some sewing today. So we are just going to get started. So today, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to iron on our interfacing to our waistband and to our facing. Okay, so this here is our waistband, which I believe is pattern number six. And I have my interfacing here. So what you wanna do is this glue side, the bumpy side of your interfacing, you want that face down and you want the wrong side of your fabric facing up, so then you can iron it to the wrong side of the fabric. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna iron it down. I'm gonna hold my iron for about five to 10 seconds in one spot, and then I'm going to move it over to the next. What I like to do for interfacing for a long piece like this is I like to start in the middle and I will work my way out. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to sew our pockets onto the side of the skirt. Okay, so 10 is your front piece. Now, this is why notches are very important. Once you take this off, because you basically have two straight edges, it might be hard to try to figure out which one's actually going to be the center front. 
So with the pattern piece here, you can see that they notched a place at the center front, but then they also notched on the side here and a double notch as well. So this here is going to be your side seam and this here is going to be your center front. And we are just gonna pin them in place. And now we are going to sew from the top here all the way down to the bottom of the pocket on both sides. Okay, so now I'm at my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch the pocket. And my stitch length is 2.5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go forward for about four or five stitches and then I'm going to go back and then I'm going to go forward again just so then we have a good back stitch and the thread will be secure. Perfect. So now I'm just going to keep going all the way down. So now our next step that we're going to do is we're going to take pattern piece number eight, which is the back of the skirt, and we are going to sew the center back seam which is the side here so we have our fabrics good to good and I'm just going to pin my center back and now we're going to sew a straight stitch all the way down the center back so now that we have sewn up our center back what we have to do is we have to press it open and then finish the center seam there are two common ways that you can finish off the seam you can either use a serger or you can use a zigzag stitch on the end I'm personally going to use my serger, but if you don't have a serger, you can just use a zigzag stitch on your regular sewing machine, and you want to make sure that the zigzag is as close as possible to the edge. So what I'm doing for the skirt is I'm going to be pressing this seam open like this. And now I'm going to be using my serger and I'm going to close my seam that I pressed open and I'm going to start serging. So this is what the serger thread looks like and how it finishes it. And now I'm going to press it one more time. I am going to press it off to one side. All right, so now that we have sewn our center back, we have serged it and pressed it off to the side, we are going to put on our pocket pieces. So we're going to put it over to the good side facing up and we are going to place our pocket pieces. So as you can see, now that I have my pockets sewn to my back piece, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish this edge here by serging and I'm going to do that on the other side of the back piece as well as I'm going to do this for the side of the front pieces. So now that I've finished the edges of the side seams, the next step is to start sewing the pockets and the side seams together. So you're going to grab your front piece and you're going to lay it on top of your back piece. So now what you're going to be doing is you're going to start sewing from the top of your pocket and you're going to go all the way around this bump and then you're going to come down the side seam here. You don't want to sew a seam here because this is where your pocket is going to be. So we are going to pin it down. So for the pocket notches, they've actually marked them as circles. I'm just laying my pattern piece back over top of my skirt front and you can see here that they have a circle which is where they want you to stitch to so I'm just going to put myself a pin in my fabric where they want me to stitch to and now we're going to start sewing so the first one that I'm going to sew is the one going along the side of the pocket and now I'm going to do my stitch from the top to the pin here where I placed where the pocket notch was what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch just on the outside of my side seam stitch. I'm not going to sew directly onto it because the pocket might show through. So I'm just going to stitch a little bit on the outside. Not by much though. So now we're going to check to make sure that I didn't sew the pocket through. And we're all good. So now you have your 
inseam pocket right here. Isn't that so cool? So I'm going to do this to the other side as well. And then that's all that I have time for today. So I'll see you all back tomorrow and we will probably get the majority of the skirt done tomorrow. So before we get started, I would just like to let you guys know that I did mess up sewing up the skirt. I will inform you where I mess up while we're doing the sew along and I will let you know how to do it properly. It's really unfortunate that I did mess up because I was really looking forward to the finished skirt. I unfortunately can't finish the skirt myself just because I would have to cut out another piece and I don't have enough fabric to cut out another piece to fix my skirt. So we're finally back in the sewing room today. It is Saturday today. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to sew a lot during the week because of work, but today we are going to finish the skirt. So let's get started. So this is our skirt here. What I did off camera is I finished the other side because we had sewn the side of the pocket and the side seam last time. So I finished both sides. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to serge around the pockets here to make sure that it's a clean edge. So I'm going to show you how to serge going around and then how to finish off here in this corner. So I'm just going to start it off like I usually do. Okay, so once you get to this part here, what you want to do is you want to try to make sure that your skirt fabric is completely out of the way. So you're going to keep going to as far as you can. Make sure that the skirt doesn't hit the blade on the side. So once it's very close to the end point here, what you're going to do is you're going to lift your presser foot up. You're going to pivot it and then you're going to chain off. Doing this pivot here just makes sure that you're not accidentally going to serge the other piece. And here you have your serge right to the end point. So this here is what your skirt is going to look like. You have your front piece and your back piece and you have your pocket here. So now what we want to do is we want to stay stitch our pocket and we are going to use a four stitch length stitch and we are just going to stitch the top of the pocket so then it's not flapping around when we sew in our waistband. So now that we have our stay stitch in place, I'm going to take this over to the iron board and I'm going to iron out all of my side seams. The next step after ironing is going to be our hem. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a basting stitch at the very bottom of the hem about a quarter inch in. This basting stitch is going to help us to make sure that our hem is going to lay flat and it's not going to be all ropey. So now that we have our quarter inch basting stitch all the way around the hem, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to fold up five eighths of an inch, going from the raw edge to the folded edge, ignoring this quarter inch line. So I'm going to be using a seam gauge for this. I am going to take this red piece here and I'm going to slide it up to 5 eighths of an inch. And now I'm going to use this as a guide to help me iron up the hem. So now that we have our hem all pressed up, you've probably noticed that it's a little wavy at the top here. That's because the hem is actually longer than the section of the skirt when you fold it up. So this edge here is going to be longer then where we are going to be stitching. So this is where the base stitch comes in handy. When we're sewing our hem, we can pull the basting stitch to gather up the stitching a little bit to ease in the hem. So now we are going to start stitching up our hem. So what you want to do is you want to use that quarter inch stitch that we had done on our hem as a guide to fold underneath. So I am going to put this underneath my presser foot and I'm going to use the my red edge stitch line on my presser foot to sew my hem. Okay so I finished my hem. You can see that there's actually some roping here because I didn't ease it in properly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to iron the hem. So we now have the finished edge on our skirt, I was able to iron out most of the roping. So now we're going to put our skirt off to the side and we are going to grab our front facings, which is number five. So what we are going to do with 
the number five piece is we're going to turn it around to the wrong side facing up and we are going to fold over five eight seven inch and we are going to iron this flat and then we are going to trim it so then it's about three eighths of an inch so now that we have trimmed them we are going to move on to the next step you guys I messed up <laughs> so at this point this is where I mess up and I didn't realize that I messed up until the very end but I'm going to show you at this point where I messed up and how you can do it properly all right so after you have trimmed down the seam allowance to three eighths of an inch what you're going to do is you're going to put your placket good side to good side with your skirt and you're going to sew a straight stitch down so after you have this straight stitch, what you're going to do is you're going to open this up and you are going to iron down the seam and you want to iron the seam facing towards your placket so then you won't see any seam allowance. So after you have ironed your seam off to the side, what I would suggest is almost skip to number 10 and do the first part. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your placket and you're going to fold it in half like this and you're going to iron it down. Then I would go to number nine and you're going to put your placket good side to good side, folding it in half and you're going to sew this part here at the bottom. Once you have this piece sewn, you want to trim the excess fabric. Then you're going to fold it right side out again and you're going to have a sharp little corner here. This step in number 10 suggests you to slip stitch all the way up, but if you don't mind the seam showing on the other side, you can also stitch it. So once you're finished sewing your placket up, you can continue on with the next steps that I'm going to show. The sewing process is exactly the same, just that I didn't have that extra extension on my skirt. So now the next thing that we are going to work on is the waistband. So we are going to put this aside for right now, and we are going to take out our number six piece. So basically we are going to do the same thing as we did for the facings. We are going to lift up 5 eighths of an inch at the bottom of the waistband, iron it down, and then we are going to trim to 3 eighths of an inch. So now that we have it trimmed, what we are going to do is we are going to sew it onto our waistband on our skirt and we are going to want to pin it all the way to the front and now we are going to stitch all the way down so now we have our stitch make sure that you check the back to make sure that you don't have any gathers or that you sewed up your pocket weird so now what i want to do is i want to trim the waistband so like we did with the facing we are just going to take the waistband and we're going to trim it down to about a quarter of an inch so we want to press it so then this seam is up and then we are going to fold the waistband in half we're going to make sure that the pressed edge here is going to be touching the stitching of the seam and we are going to press it to make our waistband so that is what it looks like from the inside so the next step that we want to do is we want to finish off this part here. So what we are going to do is we are going to flip what we had just ironed. I'm going to flip it so then it's good sides to good sides like this. And we are going to do a stitching from the bottom of the waistband going straight up. So now that we have this part stitched here, we are just going to trim off all of this extra and we are going to snip in the corner here diagonally make sure you're not cutting into your stitch and you're going to do the same thing for the bottom i'm going to do that to both sides all right so now you can use your nifty point turner and turn that right side out and look how that's going to finish that's going to look so nice now the next step that it says that we should do is to do a slip stitch 
but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to edge stitch this here because um, I'm not a big fan of hand sewing. So you'll basically just see the stitch on the outer part here, but I really don't mind that. All right, so here you can see that I stitched my waistband down and you can hardly even see the stitching of where I have on the top of my waistband. I really don't mind that at all. So we have finished basically the base of the skirt. Yay! So now all we have to do is do our buttons and our buttonholes. So let's take this over to the table and we can get started on that. I messed that up so bad that I am not even going to finish that skirt. So if you did follow along and you got to the point where I was and you actually did it correctly, I do have two videos. I have a video of how to sew a buttonhole and I have a video of how to sew on a button. I'll link those up in the right hand corner here and you can check those out. And those two videos will help you finish off the end of your project. So if you enjoyed seeing my frustration and seeing a little bit more of the realistic side of sewing and how things can completely mess up, um, please hit the like button as well as share, maybe. And if you do have any questions about the skirt, please leave a comment below and I will try to guide you through properly. But everyone does make mistakes sometimes and this was just another lesson for me. You learn something every day. Bye guys and see you soon.